I'm John Reynolds and this is uh, one of my studios and a place like this is just a workroom and I have a number of them and um, they are in a state of chaos in some senses because there's a number of projects in suspension here and at any day when I walk in uh, one or two of those projects will um, be uh, requiring attention. The one the consistent tray I suppose in my work is uh, uh, desire to uh, rotate work around, uh, I guess, handwriting, a certain kind of commitment to calligraphic or to a drawing uh, language. So if I'm using an oil stick or an oil pastel or a spray gun or, or a paintbrush, God forbid, um, I'm interested in the same kind of um, collision of ground and uh, a linear um, possibility. So, in a way, I think I almost see these. You, you, we, we might use the word diagrammatic, for example. I mean, although they're text and you can read them, I wrote nothing today, or today I wrote nothing. Uh, at the same time, um, there's a um, they're they're drawings in a sense. They're linear and they're made up of verticals and horizontals and loops. And that's absolutely a signature kind of obsession, I suppose, uh, with regard to the bigger work, which generally, whatever painterly components in the painting, uh, it tends to be driven by a concern for drawing. What I seem to be in the process of in the last few years is truncating down the, the, um, the nature of those formal concerns and the language of those formal concerns to make something that uh, teeters on the edge of um, uh, achieving some kind of uh, productive ambiguity and something that really registers uh, in, a, in a kind of a, an accurate way um, a sense of great paucity and um, candor. What, what we have here is, uh, is, a, is a, as I say, a number of projects. A word like, a little term like this, oscillate mildly, is of course a pun on oscillate wildly, and I get these terms uh, from um, things I read, or things under the influence, uh, websites I go to to look at the, the mangling of language, um, uh, terms I might read in art magazines, funk bomb, uh, hard copy text, total radness, these are all terms that come out from um, uh, my course of my reading and so forth. Um, and they belong to a series called the Acronyms, and I've made over a thousand of them, and they're, they're just, they're kind of like a, um, a diary, or a, a kind of a, what's it called, a litmus paper, a sort of a, an ongoing um, series of takes on the daily use of language and so forth, and they are very, very um, uh, underwhelming in terms of their delivery, they're silver paint marker on canvas, I haven't done anything to the canvas there, they just are what they are, and I, I quite like the way that they seem to have a tremendous lightness and they disappear almost, and then every now and again the light catches them, and they, they, so they almost have a conversational feel. I think one of the things about humour is that humour is one of the, one of the fastest ways to approach serious subjects. Uh, we tell jokes, and it's in that moment of getting it and laughing, often something else is freighted, um, a certain kind of cynicism, a certain kind of wry observation about the nature of life. Uh, and I think art, whether it likes it or not, tracks some of the contingencies that are at play in culture at any time. That often artists feel like they're working in some kind of solitary, um, and I wouldn't say confinement, but a solitary role. Um, and more often than not, of course, we're, as, we're conduits for a wider filtration that the culture's um, investing anyway. And humour is one of those great ways of um, destabilising a kind of, you know, you can unlock a viewer's um, uh, disbelief in a way, or the disinclination to enjoy a work. You can surprise them, you can, you can, you can shovel that kind of... Um, a dissuaded viewpoint. Uh, at the same time also, um, it's a bit like, it seems to be the most honest way sometimes to proceed. It seems to be, you know, there's, the art world's a very serious undertaking. 
and sometimes the best way to refer to that and to work within that is to um, look at it humorously and wryly and uh, it, it, I guess I, the claim I'd make is it's not as if I'm going out of my way to, to pursue jokes and there's any number of artists who do, um, Richard Prince for example, terrific uh, career right now looking at jokes but um, somehow when you work uh, and you're interested in, in what happens text and culture, and current culture particularly, humour inevitably uh, elbows its way into the project and uh, I find that um, it's when I'm having the most fun off them that the best things uh, reveal them, you know, come, come up to me. So I, I'm in some ways, and these little guys here are part of that, um, in some ways, you know, the work has its own kind of energy and its own kind of um, uh, momentum. And I just have to sort of turn up in a sense and uh, try and do the best I can with the material that's been that's fun me. So. You know, we're at a time where there's been a, a tremendous development in uh, the understanding of what uh, the art enterprise might involve and the conventional media of uh, painter, painting and even sculpture has been not usurped but certainly been, has been broadened hugely in terms of what constitutes um, the kind of materials a contemporary artist might reach for and the, the kind of projects they might undertake. And um, It's pretty much, as we all understand, carte blanche in terms of um, uh, what you wish to work with. I mean, down here I've got some rubber doilies made in Taiwan, I believe. Made in China. Fig one, a black rubber doily. So, um, th uh, you know, I think the artist, most artists today, are um, hungry or listening for opportunity that presents itself through uh, different media and also different um, possibilities with regard to staging whatever work they're doing, whether it's a, it's a particular gallery space or, the, or, the, um, or the, a particular site. And uh, I think this is pretty much um, worldwide.